Well, hello everyone. Today is Friday, September 19th. My name is Brian Bretschneider. I'm a seasonal forecaster with the uh, National Weather Service Alaska region. And we're gonna continue with this monthly product that we're doing, um, the uh, seasonal and monthly outlooks. These are products that come out from the Climate Prediction Center on the third Thursday of each month. So we try to uh, cycle these through as fast as we can, uh, get it out the, the next day, uh, ideally. And so that's what we're doing today. By the way, uh, don't forget to uh, hit like and subscribe to make sure that you get notifications for whenever uh, the National Weather Service here in Alaska puts out a new video. All right, so we're gonna do a few things. One, we're gonna, we're gonna see how we're doing kind of month to date. And then we're going to look at uh, some of these maps the Climate Prediction Center is putting out. And then we're also gonna look at uh, what we think is gonna be happening with La Nina in the coming months. So first, uh, and I did this last month as well. Let's talk about how we're doing with daylight. And if you look at the amount of daylight that we've uh, uh, changed since the summer solstice, actually we're almost exactly at the uh, uh, autumnal equinox, which is the midway point between uh, the solstices, the, the winter, the summer and the winter solstices. And as you can see, we have dropped about uh, almost seven hours of daylight here in Anchorage. Uh, over nine in Fairbanks, and already over 11 hours up in Nukdiagvik, almost six hours in Juneau, and you can see here for Western Alaska and Nome Bethel Cold Bay, and here on the side it shows you based on different latitudes how much has been lost as well. All right, so if we look at the some maps here, uh, so on the um, <laughs> uh, summer solstice, hours of daylight, and here on September 19th, hours of daylight, and we've almost completely dropped that 24 hours of daylight. It's only just right around the North Pole that we're getting that. Now, what do we got left to go in the next three months? About the same amount, right? Because we're halfway in between. So, um, you know, so we can see, you know, almost seven hours in Anchorage, almost nine in Fairbanks, another 12. They're, gonna, they're going from 24 hours of daylight to zero hours of daylight, another six in Juneau. So again, we're about halfway there. And if we see where we're at today, okay, versus where we're going, uh, we're, we're, we're turning, we're flipping the, the, uh, the color scale on that from uh, hours with 24 hours of daylight to uh, hours with zero hours of daylight. Okay, and so for the month to date, September 1st through the 18th, uh, statewide, we're about a degree and seven-tenths above normal uh, with a very strong uh, north-south gradient uh, pretty much everywhere to the east of 155 degrees longitude, uh, including Anchorage, Fairbanks, uh, Bettles, all the uh, populated areas of the North Slope, all of southeast Alaska are running, you know, one to even four degrees above normal. You see the scale there. And then only the western quarter or so of the state is running a little bit cooler than normal and not a whole lot. So this has been a fairly warm month so far. Not exceptional, but still uh, notably warm. And precipitation wise, it's been a pretty wet month in most places, um, particularly the northern quarter of the state above the, the Arctic Circle with the exception of the areas um, from you know, around Nome and Kotzebue. Uh, all, this is really, really wet, uh, kind of dry in the Copper River Basin. Uh, even though it's been raining a lot in southeast the last week, they had a very, very extended dry spell. So they're, they're kind of caught up to normal. Now they're currently in a very wet pattern. So next time we look at this, we're going to have a lot of greens and a lot of blues on the map. So don't be surprised uh, when that pops up. Uh, a little bit dry here in southwest around King Salmon, a little bit wet around Bethel. Overall, 129% of average, that's pretty wet for the wettest month of the year statewide. And how are we doing on sea ice? Well, we have been doing pretty good up here in the Beaufort. We've been running above normal, above average, the recent average uh, for a, quite a long time, but that has now um, gone the other side of that. We're, we're a little bit below average. You know, the Chukchi, this is a little bit deceiving, 202% of average. Um, just off the screen here, there's a lot of ice, but this whole area, obviously, pretty much 
no ice. Now, for the entire basin, the entire Arctic basin, uh, we reached the seasonal minimum on September 10th. That's what the National Snow and Ice Data Center declared, which is pretty typical. It's usually around the 8th to the 20th, so maybe two or three days early this year, but, but pretty much right in line. And this, the seasonal uh, basin-wide minimum was a pretty low value, not the lowest, but kind of the value that's been bouncing around for the last decade or so. All right, so now let's start to look at some of our Climate Prediction Center outlooks for week, what we call week two, which is the 8 to 14, uh, one month, three month, and then some more stuff after that. Okay, so this map shows the week two, or the day to 14 temperature outlook. And this looks quite a bit different than the ones that have been published for the last few days, or even the last two or three weeks that have been very, very red and orange, okay? Now we do have a tilt toward above normal temperatures um, from the Alaska Peninsula, uh, up following the Alaska Range, then up to Fairbanks, and then over to the Southeast Interior. And then a little blue even along the, uh, uh, the mountains, Cordillera of Southeast Alaska. But these are fairly low probabilities. So what we had a very amplified pattern with a strong ridge and a strong trough back here, that's gonna be flattening out on average quite a bit. So we'll bounce up and down, warmer, cooler, but on balance, we think it's gonna be a little bit warmer than normal, but this is still a low probability forecast. Um, same with precipitation, kind of the same pattern. Remember, this is the wettest time of the year from Anchorage southeastward. And this is showing above average. So this isn't just saying, well, it's gonna rain, but this compares it to what the climatological average is. And even though it's climatologically very wet, this is even tilting a little bit wetter than average. So, um, so if you like the rain in the southeast, um, I've got good news for you. All right, so that's the week two outlook. Now let's look at the month of October. This was just published yesterday, so this is hot off the presses. And we see warm, near normal to warm is what's favored in a lot of areas. Now, up here on the, um, uh, the northwest coast and the north slope, this is largely driven by the trends in the last 15 years. So remember a climate outlook is not the same as a weather forecast. Okay, weather forecast is looking at parcels of air, is following them, it's really what we call initial value problem. Um, and a climate outlook is a forcings outlook. It's looking at sea ice, it's looking at ocean temperatures, ocean currents, polar vortex, um, a lot of different things, trends, okay, in addition to dynamics. So again, fundamentally different in the way that these are constructed. So up here in Northwest Alaska, strong, strong, strong warming trend the last 15 or 20 years. So that's what's being uh, shown pretty much here. South Central and Southeast, um, it's a reflection of record warmth in the entire, really the entire North Pacific Ocean is at a record warm sea surface temperatures. With that, it's like having a warm bathtub. It's just hard to get co cool air when you're right next to that. And then this is a very rare, a, what we call a near normal forecast. Almost never happens, but because the water here is so warm, it's just, there's really no scenario where you're gonna be much cooler than normal. So it didn't, it didn't, there wasn't a signal for above normal, so the best forecast actually is near normal. Again, you very, very rare, rarely see that. Precipitation, okay, just like with the week two, the eight to 14 day forecast, I'll stay over here again. Uh, it looks pretty wet uh, from Anchorage to the Southeast interior through all of Southeast, okay? These aren't huge probabilities. This is the um, 40 to 50% chance. So remember these are probabilities, so 40 to 50% chance of wetter than normal, 33% chance of uh, near normal, and 17 to 27, 23% of above normal or below normal. So it can still be drier than normal here. That's you know, about a, a one quarter chance, but the more likely scenario is wetter than normal. Okay, now let's look at our three month outlook. This is for October, November, and December. 
very, very strong trend, very strong toward for warming temperatures here in recent decades. It's hard, hard, hard to be below normal in the western and northern parts of Alaska in the fall. The, just the sea ice regime has changed so much in just the last two decades. It used to be November, you know, the Chukchi Sea was pretty well iced over. Now November, it's pretty well open water. And so it's just a big open reservoir of warm air. Um, and it's just, it's just almost impossible to get below normal. It's not impossible, but it, a bunch of things all have to work together to make it below normal. It can still happen, occasionally does happen, but it's likely to not happen, okay? And then now we're talking near normal for Southeast, Eastern Interior. We're starting to get a little bit of a sense of possible developing La Nina being incorporated into these models, okay? So stay tuned on that, but this kind of looks a little La Nina-y with warm in the no from Northwest to cooler Southeast compared to normal. Same with uh, precipitation. Okay, wetter signal here in Northwest. Again, lots of open water here in the, uh, the, uh, the Chukchi and Bering Seas. Uh, because of the lack of sea ice, pr provides uh, a, uh, a reservoir of, of moisture for storms to tap into. Um, also, just generally, uh, warmer sea surface temperatures down farther south and the flow is gonna favor more storms and more precipitation in the western uh, part of the state. Okay, so I alluded to it a few times. Uh, let's talk about uh, our INSO, which is our El Nino Southern Oscillation uh, Outlook. So the CPC, Climate Prediction Center, once a month, they update their outlooks. And this came out last Wednesday, I believe, uh, on September the 11th. And once again, as they did last time, we are under a La Nina watch. So a watch just means we're watching it. Doesn't mean it's occurring, doesn't mean it's expected to occur. It means it's possible that it's gonna occur. Even perhaps probable, but it's not certain enough or it's not actually occurring yet. So we, we still leave it in the watch category. Now these are the probabilities. We do these in three month increments. ASO is August, September, October. SON is September, October, November. OND, October, November, December. Okay, and so on. Last month, our highest probability of La Nina was 57%. Okay, this month, it's up to 71% in the October, November, December period. So the late fall period. Okay, so that's, that's quite a bit higher. Um, we, it's not quite high enough and not quite close enough to upgrade the watch to an advisory. An advisory means it's actually occurring. Now, technically, when we look at these in hindsight and in the retrospective, we need five consecutive three month periods that meet the criteria. Now, by the time we've hit five consecutive three month periods, usually these things are over. So once we think it's, we, we're, we're heading into that and it'll, it'll be sustained for a little while, then they'll declare that we're in a La Nina. So they don't wait till we've, we've done it for five consecutive three month periods. Um, but you know, if this continues, then expect that a La Nina advisory would be issued. On the weekly time scale, the, um, the, the weekly values of the SSTs in the tropical Pacific uh, have actually hit that minus 5C threshold that we want to see maintained for, for at least a month and a half before they declare an advisory. So here's how um, the SST forecast, sea surface temperature forecast looks from, a, uh, from an, an ensemble uh, C3S system, so it uses all kinds of, you know, all the, all the acronyms. Everyone's getting in on this here. Uh, the Europeans, the Americans, the, the Asians, uh, uh, Australian, you name it, they're all in there, okay? And this is our, this is our, um, our Nino 3.4 region where, we, where we, uh, we track El Nino, La Nina here, and it, it's blue, right? So it's the, really the only cool spot in the, well, except for down here, in the entire globe for the oceans. Um, and actually this is, this is an SST anomaly. These are two meter temperature anomalies. But over the tropical oceans, they're exactly the same, right? 
because there, there's no cold fronts or anything that get down here. So, so this is a reflection of the sea surface temperatures. And when it's cool here, it means that it's warmer over here, which means this is where you get your tropical thunderstorms, which then affect the entire upper level flow and, and, and determine where the jet stream is and, and how, how the atmosphere behaves um, typically. But that, those are things that are, that are still pretty dynamic and we're just gonna keep an eye on it. And that's where we, uh, we expect this, how we expect it to evolve. Now these are some maps I showed last month and I'm gonna show them again. These are for October, November, December periods when we have a weak La Nina like we're expecting. So this is a weak La Nina values. And generally, it's warmer in the western part of the state and cooler in the eastern part and in southeast Alaska. Okay, not super cold or cool, but that is the pattern. Cooler here, a little warmer here. And this is, this is based on 17 events since 1940. Uh, precipitation, um, not a very strong signal at all. Um, a little bit wet here in the middle of the state, a little bit dry in South Central, a little bit dry up here, um, but not large amounts. These are not massive departures. Also a little bit dry in Southeast. Um, so generally where it was warmer, it's a little bit wetter. Where it's cooler, it's a little bit drier. Um, and then for snowfall, um, again, not a lot of strong signal. Everyone's pretty much hanging out kind of near normal for the October, November, December period. Now, this is the, historically, this is the snowiest three-month period of the year for much of the interior and the northern part of the state. So that's where there, where there is a little bit of a snowy signal happens to be in the snowiest time of the year. So that could... Um, uh, pretend to some, some, some decent snowpacks if these things work out. Uh, but again, La Nina isn't determinist, determinant. It is a thumb on the scale, okay? It represents um, a significant part of the climate system uh, when, when a La Nina is in effect, um, but it's not everything. There's lots of other parts of the system that can overwhelm the La Nina signal. And that's actually happened a couple times um, the last few years. So that's what I got. And again, like and subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure you get those notifications. And until next time, again, I'm Brian Brettschneider, and we will see you again soon. Thank you.